Hello, this is Xavier, and this is part two of the GIMP Basics 101 video series. Today what we're going to be covering is the image manipulation tools, which involves the rotate tool, scale tool, shear tool, perspective, flip, and now with uh, GIMP 2.8 we now have this cage transform, which I'm pretty excited about. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an active selection around this light bulb here. This is what we're going to actually be rotating and flipping and all that good stuff. So what I'm going to do is click on my fuzzy select tool, click on the white. Now I have all the white background selected. I'm going to do select invert and now I have my light bulb selected. So the first tool we're going to be covering today is the rotate tool. Simply click on that tool. I'm going to click on my active selection. I'm going to get this dialog box that appears up here and there's actually three different ways that you can rotate your active selection. The first way is you can simply type in an angle. So I type in 75, my light bulb is now going to rotate 75 degrees. I can also grab this slider bar and I can rotate it that way. And the third way that I can do it is actually click on the image itself and move my mouse in a circle and it's going to free select or free rotate for me. Now you're going to notice in the image there is going to be this crosshair symbol. You can click on the crosshair and move it and that's going to change your pivot point. So now when I rotate this it's going to pivot point around the bottom because that's where I put my crosshair or my pivot point. Okay? You can move that anywhere in your screen. So you can even move it way up top here and now your light bulb is going to rotate up at times. So that's a really helpful little trick um, to use when you're doing rotations. I'm just going to cancel on this. The next one is the scale tool. Again I just click on the scale tool, click on my active selection. I'm going to get all these boxes that are around my active selection or my image that I'm now scaling and I can click on any one of these and just move it, drag it, and I'm going to get my scale to however the size that I want it to get it at. I can also type in the exact size if I know the exact size. So I could do 300 by you know 350 or something like that and get it to an exact size that I wanted it. The next one is the shear tool. Shear tool honestly I, I don't use um, all that much but um, because it's just a 2D object with the shear it's only going to shear left to right like this. The Y isn't going to be doing anything for your image whatsoever. Kind of gives you that trapezoid. The next one is the perspective tool. This one I find extremely helpful especially when I'm doing say you know shadows um, around text or something like that. You can actually click on the image and you're going to get a pop-up box and you actually can't type anything into the pop-up dialog box. Um, you have to grab the corners and you can transform it so that say it looks like it's whoops, looks like it's laying on the ground. This center point here what that does is actually moves the entire image instead of just transforming it. You can do something like that. The last thing I want to show you is this flip tool. Flip tool simply just flips the image. If I click once, it's just going to flip it back and forth. If I hold down my control key, you're going to notice in my tool options, my vertical option gets selected. Now when I flip it, it's going to flip it vertically. The final tool that I want to show you today, and this is actually you know, the first time I've um, really been using this all that much, so it's going to be kind of a, a crass example here, is called the Cage Transform tool. What it allows you to do is create a section around an image and actually move that section in kind of a part. So what I can actually do is hold down Shift here and that will make these three points move together and then when I move them see how the hand is moving with it and I can actually influence it even more here so it kind of connects you kind of play around with it but it appears to be a great little tool to 
to move part of your image um, instead of using perspective or, or some of the other type of um, image manipulation tools. So thank you for watching the part two of the GIMP 101 basics class. If you enjoyed the video, please uh, do follow or comment or uh, like the video. Uh, all that helps us out greatly. Thank you very much. Have a great day here.